together a long time. Um, and she made me love language students. So we've been the best of friends ever since. Um, even while she was in Japan, I would see her once in a while. And uh, when she was home on her visits, and I would always say, come back, come back to Finley. And she did and got her master's, and now she's teaching in the IELP. I couldn't be more happy. I feel like she's one of my kids. <laughs> I have three children. The oldest is 31, and my second son, he's a, a son. He works in the Air Force, the U.S. Air Force, and my second son works on computers, and he's a, a technician at a Honda plant in Columbus. And my youngest is a daughter. She's 23. She just went to Chicago. Has anybody ever been to Chicago? Nice city. <laughs> she just went there for grad school, so she starts actually Wednesday going to school as a grad student. Um, I am from Missouri, as you can see here on the map, and I grew up right on the Mississippi River. So you probably wonder what I'm doing in Ohio. Sometimes I wonder that myself. <laughs> you too, probably, right? Um, I didn't come as far away as you did. Um, I came from Missouri with my husband in 1990. We moved to Ohio. And my youngest daughter was four months old when we came. And today she's 23. So we've been here oh, a little over 23, 24 years. Um, my husband transferred with his job. He's with Dow Chemical. Has anybody seen the Dow Chemical plant up on North Main Street? That's where he works. So if you're out and go north on North Main Street, it's just up the road. Okay, um, you wonder what I'm doing here probably at the University of Finley. I raised my kids until they went to school. And when my youngest was in kindergarten, I went back to work. Um, I have a, an associate's degree in hospitality management, so I thought maybe I would work for a hotel or work for um, a marketing company, but I applied at the University of Finley, and I got hired in 1999, so I've been here about 14 years, well, going on 14. Um, I started in language and culture. And I have loved it so much over the years that I've just stayed in language and culture. A lot of times when people get hired on the UF campus, they kind of move around and move up in their jobs. But I loved it in language and culture so much, and I love international students. I love college students in general. I have become known in the office to a lot of people as their American mom. So. I take care of a lot of a lot of kids, yeah. <laughs> and Sean is one of my one of my adopted daughters. <laughs> um, I have kids that I we've come through the program um, in language and culture and masters of TESOL. They go back to China, Taiwan, Japan. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some countries. Korea, South Korea. Um, so I have friends all over the world. Oh, Saudi Arabia, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Mohanan. <laughs> Mohanan's wife, Rima uh, Nuf, is one of our students, right? Yeah. Um, and then you are undergrad TESOL, correct? Yeah. Does everybody know what TESOL is since you're learning ESL? English as your second language? Yeah. Um, anybody have any questions so far? me? <laughs> no? Okay, well, I will tell you a little bit about language and culture. Um, over the years, we, the university has decided that we need to help recruit students into the language and culture program. And it not only includes the IELP, but it includes our undergrad um, majors in Spanish, and we, te we train teachers for Spanish education, so it's a cooperative program between language and culture, the Spanish program, and education. So they go out to the, teach high school in the USA. Um, we have Japanese major, and that's what Sean was. And 
but she didn't go the teaching route, right, Sean? You just went Japanese nope. major. And all of our students who major either in Spanish or Japanese have to go study abroad. So that's how Sean got to Japan. She had to go study abroad and then got hired by a company, correct? Is that Fiona? Fiona. Yeah. She brought me smart pens. Um, so in that effort to do recruiting, we do something every October and this year for language and culture is going to be on Thursday, October 3rd. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we, we call our high school visit day Travel the Globe. And it goes from 8 a.m. to 12, 12.30, something like that. Um, and that's something that you as a level, advanced level student in the IELP will ask, be asked to participate in. And you've probably talked to your other professors about it, right? Mr. Mott? Who has Mr. Mott? Has he asked you to be, take yeah. part in, yeah. yes. to volunteer for Travel the Globe? Okay. Um, that'd be wonderful if you can. We, we need all the help we can get. Um, we, like I said, it's for high school students in the area, and they come here to learn about you. They are very interested in culture. Um, they, it's evolved over the years where our students have taken their culture and done culture sharing, such as food. Um, we've done panels where the high school students can ask you questions, say, about dating in your country. What do you do to date? Do you date? Do you have arranged marriages? Do you um, depend on your folks to, to introduce you to somebody? Um, we, we've done that sort of thing. Um, this year, we'll be doing five or six sessions. Like I said, they begin at 8 o'clock. So if you're asked by Mr. Mott to take part in that, I really would appreciate your help. I'm the point person for that, so I probably what will happen is that since you're IELP students, you will get assigned one of my masters and TESOL students that will be your helper. And they will take you outside of class, since this is all volunteer time, and we to totally appreciate that, we'll take you out of outside of class and work with you on your presentation, whether it's for answering questions about dating, marriage, um, stereotypes, whether you want to share your food, your dress, um, you know, all kinds of different, you can do whatever topic you want. So probably, you'll be hearing more about it from your IELP teachers um, as, as the month goes on. But we truly do have one month to pull this together. We expect about 150 high school students and their ages are from 15 to 18. Okay, and they, like I said, they are they're upper level language students. They're studying Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, French, or German. So, okay. Any questions about that? Um, over the years, like I said, I told Ms. Sean I wanted to tell you how much my job has changed over the years. When I first started in 1999, I was working exclusively for the director of Masters at TESOL, and her name was Dr. Irma Hansen, and I worked part-time, purely four hours a day, five days a week. That was it. I came in and I did what she told me to do, and I left. I didn't have much contact with students at all, and so over the years, it's just sort of evolved. Um, we were, we've been in three different locations over the years that I can remember. One, two, three, no, excuse me, four different locations. And pretty soon, I think next year or maybe the year after that, all of the houses out here on Davis Street will be knocked down. 
and there's going to be a new business school there, new um, MBA business, and an AMU for students. So I don't know where we're going after that. <laughs> we may go back to Myers Hall, which is where the IELP started over in Myers Hall. Um, but that remains to be seen. So um, after I worked part time with Dr. Hansen, then I took over from the secretary and masters of TESOL because she went to a different department. Um, I was purely doing language and culture work. And then Dr. Kyle Mora took over language and culture in the early 2000s. Um, some of you probably weren't even born yet in 1999, were you? <laughs> Who's, <yeah? laughs> Who's older than that? <laughs> Does anyone have a birthday after 1999? Yeah. Uh, I knew it. I knew there'd be somebody. <laughs> yeah, there are some babies in this yeah. class. <laughs> but um, like I said, over the years, I, it, my job evolved into helping, helping more students. And the first student that I helped, I'll always remember her. She and her husband were here in the United States. They didn't take out the UF insurance. They were from China. They got pregnant quite unexpectedly. And so that, she was my very first student that I was able to help. I went with her to doctor's appointments because she didn't speak much English and I helped her get a low delivery rate which means if you don't have insurance it costs a lot of money to have a baby in the United States but this was unexpected you can't always control when you're <laughs> when you're gonna have a baby so um, I helped her get a doctor and the doctor did her delivery for basically nothing because I helped be, I was her liaison. I was representing UF as a whole to the doctor and the medical community and I was representing her as a UF student who needed help. And we still stay in touch. I get goosebumps when I think about it because she, she and her husband were so sweet. And that just sort of gave me an idea I love international students and if you, I've helped countless international students over the years, apartment finding, lease problems, um, gosh, you know, medical problems, I've helped another girl through a, a gallbladder problem. She didn't take out the UF insurance either so I think the moral of my story is take out the UF insurance if you don't have insurance because <laughs> the medical medical care in the US is really expensive um, but sort of just went from there I just love my job I'm full-time now I was made full-time last year and I'm here every day from 8 8 30 to 5 sometimes after 5 o'clock I'm just across the street in 227 Davis for the time being, like I said, because they will be using that, that property there to make a new building at some point. And I know somebody has to have questions about any, any questions. Did I cover your main focus? What were you supposed to listen for? Is this a listening class? Okay, I should have asked that earlier. <laughs> and I talk kind of fast, so I'm sorry if I miss something. So you can feel free to ask me questions. Really, I'll now, ask. Now remember, you. we're supposed to be listening for the main idea. Um, supposed to be listening for supportive details that support that main idea. So if a speaker asks you at the end of their talk, do you have any questions? This is the time. If you don't, if you're not clear about what that main idea is, you can ask the person. For this class, usually we don't ask the speaker, so what are you really talking about? <laughs> because then they might be angry. But in this class, because we're practicing speaking, this is your chance to say to her, what do you think would be the main point of this speech, what are you? What is the most important thing that you are trying to get across to us? 
or if you have just things that are interesting to you. Maybe she said something about why she came to the University of Finley or how she got into this kind of work. Anything that interests you, she's waiting and wanting to answer your questions. Okay, Mohani. Uh, uh, okay, this is uh, I want just to be sure. Uh -huh. uh, you, you, you are here just uh, to tell us about uh, the travel, travel the globe. Travel or, the globe. Or you, are, you want us to know that you are here to help us. Yes, the main focus was I'm here to help. I'm here to serve. I, that's what I do. I like I said, I'm American mom to very many students, and you can come to me first if you need something. I know you're probably used to, or maybe don't know that you can go to the international admissions office if you have a problem. But I sometimes take care of even those kind of problems. So I'm here and available. So that was my main focus. My second focus was to <laughs> encourage you to be part of Travel the Globe. Because so. that's part of her job as helping, yeah. is to introduce you to opportunities that you can get to know the community and get to use your English and be more involved. Yes, the main focus of Travel the Globe and you as a student at UF is to practice your English. And the high school students who come are very, very good students. They're very good listeners. They will usually love culture because they're a, a language student already. And they, they just have the most wonderful time. And you get a t-shirt out of it. <laughs> you get free lunch if you can come and help. Um, there's lots of opportunities. So if you haven't talked to Mr. Mott about it, I really would appreciate if you can you can help us out. <coughs> Any other questions about anything at all? Huh? No. I've made friends with lots of lots of international students and students in general. The American students, domestic students who come often come back and see me. Does anybody know Miss Jamie Lummis? Lummis? She was here last week and she comes to see me when she comes in. Um, she lives in Cleveland and comes back quite often. Um, right now I'm trying to help somebody from North Carolina get here. She needs a job and needs a master's degree to do it, so she's trying to get here. I'm trying to work on housing for her, so I have, and she's my age, so never too late to go back to school. <laughs> okay, I brought everybody a pen. <laughs> we love These free pens. My office, I yeah, I see some may have them already. Yeah, and if you... Um, usually I take care of the language lab also, so if you guys need anything in the language lab, please let me know. Paper, pens, pencils. And I have this to entice you also, but you have to come see me to get it. I have a light keychain. Keychain holder, a light for your keychain. But you have to come see me to get it. So, you don't have to come with a problem. You can just come and say hi. I'm coming to get my keychain holder. <laughs> and you can introduce yourself and have a small conversation with me if you'd like in English. If you want to practice your English, come anytime. Okay? Thank you All for right. having me. Thank you very much. Sure. Have a good class. All right, you thank you.